Welcome back to Santa Monica Weekly. There is a new type of crime that's on the rise nationwide and right here in Santa Monica, and it's probably not something that you would expect or prepare for. Joining us to talk more about this is Eric Milosevic from the Santa Monica Police Department. Welcome to Studio 16. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming in. So what is it? What is this new type of crime we're talking about? Catalytic converter theft, uh, which has actually been around for quite some time. It kind of ebb and flows. But we've seen an uptake of it recently, um, in the last three or four months, where people have their catalytic converters stolen from their vehicles. So, I mean, most people, including myself, may not know what a catalytic converter is. Can you right. explain that? So a catalytic converter, it's part of the exhaust system. Uh, it's been mandatory for vehicles to have it on the vehicle since 1975. So again, they've been around for a little while, and they contain precious metals. That's why the thieves are taking them. So it can have platinum, palladium, or rhodium in the, the converter. So that's why thieves go after it. And there's really been a, a little uptake in precious metals recently. Uh, so now, when, whenever that happens, we're going to see an uptake in the theft of the catalytic converters. So the catalytic converter, if it's part of the exhaust, is on the bottom of the car. Correct. So the thieves come and get underneath the car somehow? How yeah. does this work? Yeah, they crawl right underneath the car. So a lot of times they are, we see vehicles that are maybe four-wheel drives, vehicles mm -hmm. that are uplifted, uh, get the catalytic converters stolen because they'll get right underneath there. Um, but surprisingly, even uh, Hondas, uh, the, the RAV4s, which are, they sit up a little bit, mm -hmm. but even Honda Accords, um, different cars that you'll see that aren't even in that high off the ground, they're crawling underneath there. Uh, and But it's metal, how converters. do they get it off? So they have, Usually it's saws, cordless, electric, chargeable saws. So they'll go into there and saw them off. So one thing we tell neighbors when we go out in their neighborhood watch program and say, hey, if you hear a saw going off in the middle of the night, wow. give us a call because there's a chance this is going on. And a lot of times, and we've had neighbors will go out there after a theft has occurred and a witness will say, you know, I heard something at night, but I didn't pay much attention to it because uh, they're not thinking someone's stealing my catalytic converter. <laughs> right. Right, so uh, so we ask and we try to get the word out there that if you do hear that buzzing saw kind of sound going off in the middle of the night, please give us a call immediately so we can get out there. Wow. So once they go through all the trouble of getting it, what do they do with it? So they sell it. Because of the metals, they sell it. They can go to different used parts stores or um, junkyards, and a lot of times they'll offer them 100 to $150 for the part. However, when you go to try to get it replaced, it's going to cost you anywhere from 1500 to $2,000 to get it replaced. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. So what can we do to try to prevent this type of theft? Well, one is just being aware. That's why we're trying to get the message out there, being aware. So parking your car if you can. Obviously, best if you can have a garage, but not all of us have garages. Um, but if you can park it in, in a well-lit area, for one. Um, and there are ways you can get safety uh, parts on the catalytic converter, anti-theft parts. Um, or you could go to your mechanic, and they can actually weld the... Uh, catalytic converter to the frame. Um, or we're having a program as well where you can go out and we actually paint the converter. We paint it a bright orange uh, and then we etch your license plate number on the converter as a preventive measure. Uh, the theft calls underneath the car and bam, there's this bright orange catalytic converter. They're not bright orange. Uh, and they know that if they get caught with this, I mean, if it is painted and the license plate number is on there, that they could get uh, charged with possession of stolen property. Uh, now, how do you know if it's gone? Since it's underneath yeah. the car. So you'll know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as soon as you turn your car on, it'll sound like a Harley Davidson. Uh, it's real loud, real loud sound underneath the car. It's just an open exhaust system at that point. Oh, terrible. Um, you can. You can still drive it, even though it sounds horrific. Um, you can drive it to your mechanic, uh, even though it sounds that way. You may get pulled over, and then you just tell them. The officer will probably know, oh, you lost your car, they converted it in you. you know? and it's, but, but again, you can drive it to the mechanic even though it's making this horrible sound. Now, you mentioned earlier that you have those etch and catch events. Um, yes. But I heard that the one you're having is already sold out. Will you be holding more events? Yes, it got sold out, which uh, we're really excited about. Um, we are, this is, our, again, our first one. So we're going to see how this one goes. Uh, if things go well, which we plan on it will, then more than likely we will have others, just because we were really surprised how quickly it sold out. Are there other places you can get the etching done? Um, the etch and catch, you could go to your mechanic and okay. ask them to do it. Uh, it's, it's really pretty simple what we do. It's, uh, it's just getting underneath the vehicle, this difficult part. Right. But again, we're etching the license plate number onto the catalytic converter and then painting it a bright orange with uh, paint, special paint for hot, hot temperature paint. Mm -hmm. um, 
But yeah, so you could definitely go to so McDonald's and ask any, them to do it. Any place can probably do it. Okay. True. So the event is called Etch and Catch. But etch what happens catch. to the criminals if they do get caught? Is it a felony or? Yes, I was actually talking to our detective this morning who handles these cases, and he says typically that it's they're booked for grand theft. Um, again, it's they can only get a hundred to maybe two hundred dollars at the most when they when they sell them. However, the cost to replace it is going to be fourteen hundred, two thousand dollars to replace it. So therefore, it's booked as grand theft. Um, also, sometimes they could get charged with conspiracy if they're working together. Mm -hmm. Burglary tools is a, is a common one. Um, and then if, if someone is caught, some of these junkyards are caught with a lot of them and they see that they're painted and they're etched, and that's why we really like to do that. Because if they get caught with one that's painted and etched, it's really hard for them to say, well, I didn't know it was stolen. Yeah. Right. All right, so you, we have, that's why another thing about the, uh, the etch and catch program that we really like. Um, is then they are then they go to court and they have these painted catalytic converters. It's great evidence for us against them. Uh, so not only is the the thief, but the people that are taking these parts are well could be charged. Absolutely. So I want to talk about um, the types of vehicles that are most frequently targeted. You mentioned some SUVs that sit up higher. It's right. obviously easier for them to get underneath the vehicle. Any makes, models, or brands that are. Uh, well, Common. like we said, I don't know why, but Hondas, we've seen a lot of Hondas, the RAV4s uh, have been Toyota on RAV4, there. Toyota RAV4, Honda, you said the Accord, so e Honda all Accords. makes and Hondas? Really, it's all makes and models of vehicles, because again, 1975, it's mandatory uh, that these uh, catalytic converters be on there, so they're under there. Um, so uh, the thieves sometimes will get used to going to certain vehicles and getting them. Um, even some of diesel vehicles, they also have them. Uh, so some diesel trucks were getting hit pretty hard because wow. they're a little bit larger catalytic converters. So they have saving some more of the precious metals inside. So d for people who don't know that much about cars, what does it look like exactly? It's about yay long and yeah, a maybe a little bit smaller. Tailpipe? It looks similar to a muffler. Okay. If uh, if you look under the vehicle, if you know what a muffler looks like, it's similar. <laughs> um, and so when you look under the vehicle, you'll see the muffler and the catalytic converter. Um, but they're different. So it almost looks like. Two mufflers, really. Okay. But yes, one of them is the catalytic converter. And they're usually kind of a, a brighter metal, usually, but yeah, about yay big, kind of oval shaped. Got it. So all this is new information for me. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Yeah. What about like good old fashioned car break ins? Is that still a problem? Is that uh, still happening? Unfortunately, that still is happening. Yeah, I wish that would just go away, but that, that is also occurring. Um, so we, we're trying to get it, the word out to people as well. Some of the simple things that are common sense to most of us, but you know, we get in a hurry. You leave stuff in the, the vehicle uh, and it gets taken. So we're really trying to just, an awareness again on that, is take your stuff inside with you. Uh, we walked through the, the mall parking structure just to see what was out there and we were so surprised. We look in the vehicles, there's a laptop. There's no a bag. Way. Yeah, yeah, a laptop um, right on the front seat of the vehicle. Wow. Um, I mean, not there's that it's bags an excuse, in there. But right, wow. and I, again, I think people just get caught up in their lives going, going, yeah. going, and they don't think about I can become a victim. Um, but and unfortunately, we have to be really aware of that. Uh, awareness is the key in taking proactive steps. Right. So if you can, take it with you. Um, we talk about hiding it, at least put it in your truck, in your trunk so you just, they don't look in there and go, oh, wow, there's a laptop right in the front seat. You don't want that to happen. Um, and so yeah, just uh, really the, the awareness. And lock your vehicles. Surprisingly, a lot of these vehicles that get uh, broken into, they're not even locked. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. So let's switch gears. I want to talk a little bit about you. We know yeah. that you're a very busy man. You taught the Krav Maga self-defense classes. You were the host of National Night Out. We've seen photos of you doing yoga. Yeah. And then we also <laughs> have this video of you dancing, <laughs> which was me? really impressive, by know. the way. <laughs> Good move. That's a great move. So how important uh, is it, as, you know, as a Santa Monica police officer, for you to stay involved with the community? Uh, I think it's just immensely important. Uh, it's a huge part of my job right now as a neighborhood resource officer is to have that relationship with the community and to really to try to break down some stereotypes. I think that people see police officers in this uniform and sometimes they almost think we're like robots. Yeah. You know, and inside this uniform is a person just like the rest of you. Yeah. Uh, so with I really try to moves. break that down. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy dancing. I definitely Can I you definitely show do. us some dance moves? Um, <laughs> sure, I don't know. Like the time, we're probably running out of time. We'll do it at the end. We'll do it at the end. Okay, at the end. Yeah, yeah. But this if you really guys dance with me, maybe. Okay, you know. okay, okay. Right, right. Yeah, no, it was great. The kids loved it, and that's a 
great thing for the police officers to do in the community. So thank you. And thank you so much for all the work that you and all your fellow officers do to keep us all safe. Absolutely. Thanks again for being here yeah, with thanks us. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, our pleasure. Appreciate our it. pleasure. And once again, the Etch and Catch event is September 30th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And you can find all of the details at SantaMonicaPD.org or by calling 310-458-8474. And you can also find more information on the SMPD's Facebook page, which is Facebook.com slash Santa Monica PD. And that's our show for this week. Please join us again next week and remember to set your DVR to record us or you can also watch us on our YouTube channel and make sure that you leave some comments. And be sure to follow us on Instagram for all the updates and information about all the fun things happening in and around town. We'll see you guys next here, uh, next week <laughs> right here for another episode of Santa Monica Weekly.